It's a Tuesday, December the 20th, and we like to start our council meeting. And uh, Sunny will be with us, but um, I'll do a take a call <laughs> order. Mayor Eichhorst, Councilor Bergner. Here. Richards. Here. Phillips. Here. And is Carl on the line? No. Okay. He may, there's a separate Zoom invitation from our 530 meeting on CETA, so he may call in. So next item is the agenda. And uh, I would like to um, move up item L2, L personnel community center. And point number two is the resolution. No, that's not it. I'm sorry, second. Who did this? It's under planning and zoning. Item number three, request for rezoning from R1 to B2 and conditional use permit for annual boarding at 832nd Avenue Southeast in Orinoco. So I'd like to request to move that up to before the uh, departments and committee reports and after our public hearing on delinquent water bills. That's J point number two. I move to uh, accept the agenda as amended. I second that. Okay. All right, any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. That's approved. Next is our uh, public forum. The three minute time limit for the council welcomes and encourages participation from community members. Please keep in mind that your comments must be pertinent to city business and must adhere to data privacy rules. No employees' names may be used. Please do not expect action from the council this evening regarding your concerns. To address the city council during public forum, please step up to the podium. State your name and address and fill out the form provided and speakers will be recognized only once. Do you have anybody that would like to speak this time? Please come to the podium and state your name and address. Uh, Jan Tronson, Ellen Property at 25 Minnesota Avenue. Merry Christmas to the board and everybody in the room and uh, Happy New Year. I you have to believe sometimes you kind of miss me once in a while around here because I got to come back. Um, my road wasn't plowed. Ten years. I've been going on this for ten years. I was promised the last time this would never happen again. It snowed Wednesday, no plowing. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I'm driving over the piles to get to my, my property. I made the phone call to people. And I, I'm not understanding why. I pay my taxes on time. I try to be a very good, I try to help you guys for gold rush. I try to be a good person here. And it seems like I'm not blaming the council, but I have to come before the council because you hired the contractor that does the snow plowing. It has become now, it's almost like I believe it is, it is done on purpose. As I drive through, as I drive through Orinoco, all the roads were plowed. Mine's not plowed. I don't. Under, I, I just don't. I don't understand it. The sewers coming up there in March. They cut a whole bunch of trees down. The easement that they're going to put it in. The brush still lays there. Now, the city council's part, but whoever your contractor is, if you cut it down to be able to do that, they should have come back all summer. I, I've looked at those that brush pile as I drive in. Lay there. So I guess my question is, who's watching, who's overseeing all this, what these people are doing? In fact, I even reported that one day that I watched the, called one council member and said, you know what, I just saw the big uh, U truck driving down the city road. He's overweight. He's breaking up the roads. I don't know. When he goes over some of your bridges, he's got to be overweight. The big rock truck that the guy that's doing the sewer plant, he's driving down your city streets with it. 
it, it costs all of us money when people do stuff like this. And so I, re I reported, I said, you know what, what's the big rock truck doing on them? And I was told he was told not to do that. Well, we'll be that one. But again, I, I know what else I have to do. I shouldn't have to make the calls. Ken here, I've done this every year for 10 years. I had my road not plowed for two weeks and I paid for it all. That was a huge mistake. I paid for that out of my own pocket and the city went back to plowing it. So Merry Christmas, everybody. And, and like I said, I, I, I'm, well, and I sure hope that you don't pay the person overtime to come up and pay when you come up on Saturday after late Saturday afternoon after the Vikings game, because that was more important than my road. That no one could get a hold of anybody, and then after the Viking game was done. So I hope the city isn't paying him overtime to come and do a job that he should have done. Well, right. It was plowed. What's that? It was plowed. It was plowed. I take uh, late Saturday afternoon. I left at four o'clock and still on. You know who plowed it? Was it the city? I have, or I, all it? I can tell you is I would have to believe it's your. I think Oppen, well, was it, because I could see the dual tires. So I, I can see that it was a dump, it went one path, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then I see when I come back today, I think, uh, I can't mention the name, but one of your city employees in the past has brought the truck up there, and it was widened up a little bit more, because he just made one pass through there on Saturday and Sunday and whatever, and then come back. And it's plowed it to the width, it should be now. But I know that all you people would be very unhappy if four days went, now it's all back down, and it's all ice for me. And the sun doesn't shine up there very much because of the tree line and stuff like that. So, okay. Well, okay. Well, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Jen. Anybody else like speak of it for him? My name is Dale Weens, and I live at 640 2nd Avenue Southeast. And my concern tonight is. <clears throat> with the speeding that's been happening in 2nd Avenue. We built the house there in 1984, and obviously there wasn't the traffic that's there now. But we have a blind driveway, and uh, the number of near misses as we come out of our driveway are too numerous to even mention. And what I have seen there in the past with little children, people taking kids in strollers, um, little girls that are on their bicycles, that are on the top of the hill. Um, it's, it's scary. And I've talked to a few people from the area and uh, unfortunately, it was met with ridicule. <laughs> and um, the 30 mile an hour speed limit has been changed to 20. And there's no electronic sign there, but just this afternoon I followed two cars and one was doing 35 and the other one was right behind me. I'm just stating that, that I would just really encourage or ask for some help up there. I don't know what the final answer is, but the signage is not doing that and people are continuing to speed. And it's just it's, it's just reached a peak this year that's been been pretty bad. Even the construction workers said that it was amazing. Several of them had to jump out of the way as a speeding cars were going by while they were working on the road. Yeah. It's it's the River Park area which is the, the that's where I live. So Dale, did you say southwest? Southeast. 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 All right. Thank you. So we have those electronic signs. They can record data, times, speeds, cars, number of cars. So we'll, I know city staff is aware of your situation, and we just put the sign up there maybe two weeks ago, I'm guessing. So we'll, I don't... I don't think that's the final answer yet, but we'd like to see some indication uh, that the average speed is closer to 20. One question I have is where the uh, actual speed is taken. Um, 
because it's when you start to see it, it's you're usually going closer to 30. So by the time you get to the sign, it can be 20. So I, I need to talk with Kane. I think, and talk about that. I think you're right, Brad. And I think when you get the 20 mile an hour, you might be doing 20, but by the time you crest the hill, it's 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 much faster. <laughs> we have we have a mailbox that's right across the street. And we have taken to wear the safety vest when we go to our, go our mailbox, and it's just it's unbelievable that that's what we have to do. But there's times when I have literally had to jump in the ditch because I was afraid that I was going to be hit. I've had the finger given to me, I've had the fist, I've had every expression that you can imagine just because I'm trying to pull out of my driveway, and I cannot see what's coming from the cell phone. So, drastic measures, I think. The only solution out there. Yeah. I would love to say that it'll change, but I don't the experience as I've had with the people that I that are doing this. I've had my own mailbox on a flat, completely open road with nobody in in the middle of the summer taken out by the drivers that you're talking about. I don't know what will change people like that didn't even change them and their behavior. So I, I don't know. I know, I know exactly what you're talking about. And I think it's really unfortunate. Um, I, I don't know. We've, we've mm -hmm. really tried to help. I am uh, friends with the mayor from the water bingo. And they had quite a bit of concern with highway 60 and 57, which is a major intersection there. And he said that the people from MnDOT say signs don't work. Mm -hmm. And they got around the line after all these years and numerous accidents. People were killed, injured, and I just don't want to see that happen right there in the hill. So, uh, <coughs> I appreciate you coming forward tonight. Thanks, Dale. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Second final call for public forum. Third and final call. Yes. Public forum. Hi. Hi, Joy. Hi, my name is Joy Bertzinger, and my address is 600 6th Street Southwest in Orinoco. And just a general comment. Um, I haven't been to many meetings lately, but one of the reasons is, is I have a disability in hearing and I find it very hard to hear the council members when you speak, um, when I'm in the audience and in sitting in the audience tonight, even other people have commented. So just wondering if you ever use speakers, microphones anymore. Yes, um, we have some improvements coming and we'll be talking about it tonight. We're going to install new speakers and the amplifier in the console that controls those amp was damaged. So we're replacing it as well. Okay. So thank you for sharing those comments. It just reaffirms that we need to improve not only the microphones, but also the sound system too. So. All right. Thank you for hearing my concern. You're welcome. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, John. Those council members, I guess we can speak up. I'm sure everybody would appreciate that. And third and final call. We will close public forum at 6 uh, 54. Okay. We have a couple, we have a presentation, I should say, um, regarding our Orinoco age friendly survey results. And uh, Rosemary Van Helden, I'd like to have her come forward. She's our committee chair and um, we recently did a survey so rosemary if you share those results maybe a little background of the committee each friendly or local um, committee and we have gotten the uh survey results we've been meeting monthly and um we have sent out our letter of application and our um letter requesting acceptance into the age-friendly mm -hmm. network. We were supposed to receive the certificate last week and the weather, because of the weather that had to be canceled. So it's been delayed for a month, but we will be receiving that um, certificate. 
be part of the um, AARP age friendly um, network. Jay Hapala will be coming from um, the cities to present that. We've been uh, reviewing, we did the survey and we've been reviewing the results of that. Looking at and discussing, we, we just had one meeting since the survey results came, but um, we're going to um, review those some more and formulate our direction of what we're going to do going forward from here. Dan Conway from the Air Agency on Aging suggested that we maybe start by interviewing some of the agencies that provide services in the area. And um, from there, we'll take steps. We will we'll compile some questions and then interview the agencies to see what kind of services we can bring into the area. And um, one of the big things that we need to do is develop mm -hmm. our volunteer base. So I guess we would want to encourage everybody to um, be thinking about that and think about groups or individuals that would be available because without volunteers, we can't really um, offer anything to the agency to, to encourage them to, to provide the services or help us to get the services out there. And we're also um, planning to work with the seniors group the Parks and Trails Committee, First Responders, Fire Department, Lions Club, or who else, whoever else we can get to um, work with us on this as far as volunteering and cooperating in different areas of it. Um, in January, Dan Conway, who is a consultant from the um, their agency on aging said that they will be RFPs or um, grants coming out in January. So we'll be looking at, uh, you know, what things, what expenses, what projects do we want to work on and possibly uh, tap into that. So, um, Joy, do you have anything you want to add to that? No, I, I think Rosemary, you've done a, a good job as always, <laughs> recapping everything. Again, we're just waiting to hear more on the survey. Um, the volunteer part is kind of an immediate thing that we feel the community can benefit from. So I think we'll be working towards that. Thank you. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Thank you Rosemary. <laughs> Next item, um, presentation is regarding our uh, Oracle Outstanding Citizen presentation and Bo Hanberger from the committee. I'd like to have him share that with us. Greetings, Council. Hope everybody's getting ready for the fabulous weather we're having. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Bo Hanberger, uh, along with Mayor Eichhorst. Skyler Breitenstein and I formerly served on uh, City Council for many years and continue to serve on the uh, Oracle's Outstanding Citizen Committee. Uh, regretfully, Skyler's son had an away basketball game tonight, uh, and he is unable to be here, but sends his gratitude to council and hopes you appreciate his early holiday gift that each of you won't have to put up with his coffee breath. <laughs> he also sends his congratulations to this year's Orinoco's Outstanding Citizen. Uh, many years ago, uh, when we served on city council, Orinoco tragically lost a lifetime businessman, or a longtime businessman, excuse me, Gordy Caro. When Skyler came up with the idea for this award to honor Gordy, with help from Gordy's nephew, Mac, the support of Gordy's wife, Yvonne, and the support of city council, he saw a need to recognize so many people who give back to Orinoco, our hidden gem of a community in Southeast Minnesota. Without these types of volunteers, this city wouldn't survive, yet alone thrive. The award hangs to the right as you enter the Orinoco Community Center. Current and past residents can be nominated annually as long as they have resided and volunteered within the city of Orinoco. The next nomination window will be later this summer uh, or early fall. This year's awardee for 2022 
began volunteering in Oco, Orinoco many years with her husband at downtown Orinoco Gold Rush days. Before long, she saw a need to help Orinoco seniors stay active. And over 10 years ago, she began the Young at Heart exercise group. Seniors feel welcome to come here to the community center on Wednesday mornings and exercise for exercise, yoga, and support. As that wasn't enough, she saw a need for even more senior outreach and several years ago began seeking council permission to help Orinoco seniors even more. Her idea turned into the age-friendly Orinoco committee seeking to improve Orinoco area to become a more age-friendly community, hoping to better serve citizens as they age. Here are a few comments about Rosemary's about Rosemary by local residents. Quote, she has done so much for our seniors and is helping keep people in their homes that want to stay in their homes. Rosemary is caring, compassionate, engaged, and dedicated to the community as anyone you'll ever know. Another resident said, quote, Rosemary has been involved in helping community members for over 20 years. Her concern for others is evident when we discuss the needs of the community. She articulates those needs in a manner that we can understand, which encourages us to continue working towards our goal. I am honored to know her and benefit from her kind and caring soul. Unquote. She honestly didn't know when she was asked to be here tonight uh, that this was going to be anything other than a brief update on our uh, age-friendly group. So without further ado, I'd like to present this year's Orinoco Outstanding Citizen for 2022 to Rosemary Van Houten. <laughs> so rather we need a picture i've got a little certificate from the city for you and then the city would also like a picture so they can who wants to take a picture it's perfect <laughs> renee's got it awesome thank you <laughs> Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks for the presentation. <laughs> <laughs> it was only a good year to present. Congratulations, Rosemary, and thank you. Thank you for all your work. My favorite meeting of the year because of this. <laughs> 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 Definitely is the cornerstone of our age family committee. Uh, All right. Next item is our <laughs> taxation public hearing. It's an open forum for public comments regarding our. Taxation is resolution 2022-34, approving the 2023 final budget and tax levy. So just some background of that. Our tax um, total final Levy for 2022 is $1,075,534. And that compares to our current 2022 total levy of $920,971. That was about, it's, it's what's being proposed is about a 16.7% increase in our, uh, in our total levy. That's being proposed. And we're kind of a unique situation because our home values, our property values of the, uh, the tax capacity the funds we're receiving from Olmstead County, it went up 16.6% as well. Home values are increasing and we're well aware of that, everybody. 
So at the same time, our rate is staying the same this year as last year, 0.374. So it's a flat increase, 0.02%. Um, or 2%, I should say. Two to one. So, but, uh, so the tax rate is staying the same at 0.374, which is continues to be one of the lowest in the county. We're, uh, which is something that we're nice to have. But at the same time, we're also seeing our property values increasing as we, a lot of people are throughout the whole county. So with that, anybody would like to speak uh, to that okay. increase or to that figure? Um, please step up to the podium and share any comments you may have. I know there's been some comments that the city's already heard from increases in their tax property for 2023. And uh, those discussions and challenges, if you will, for those uh, tax levies, increases of property taxes, that happens in our board of equalization meeting that we have usually that first week in April. And uh, they come here and we also have the um, representatives from the Homestead County property records, they'll be here as well. So there's a process that we as a council reflect on some decision-making, but some of those cases will also go to the county level as well. But they are here to answer those questions at that April meeting, so. And that just reminds me for everybody on the council that doesn't have mm -hmm. that uh, training. Mm -hmm. Even though we're uh, not able to, it should be. Uh, it's 2024 is when we can make any type of actions because of our not getting all done last year. So, but the county representatives will be here as well to hear the arguments. So, a second call for public hearing. And does anybody have any comments regarding the tax rate? Any? I want to make sure there's. If not, third and final call. So we'll close the form at seven eight. So for the council, we have resolution twenty twenty two dash thirty four. Would somebody like to make a motion to approve that resolution? I'll move. <laughs> Do we yes, all speak at the same time? Approve that resolution 2022 30 34. And I second. 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 Any other comments? Okay. So we're just. Oh. We're just. Wait, it's correction. Yeah, you wrote call on that one. Okay. Anyway, we're just getting ready to call the vote on this resolution 2022 Okay. Oh. Oh. Did we change any of those? No. No, it's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Excellent. I'm sorry. Ketchup, the motion was made by uh, Dana, second by Jim Phillips. Thank you. Ready for the word. Chair Eichhorst? Aye. Councillor Bergner? Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips? Aye. Councillor Richards? Aye. Councillor Krause? Aye. Councillor Susan? Aye. Aye. Councillor Bissett? Aye. Okay. Okay, that's approved. Thank you. Next item is a, a public hearing for water bill. That's what um, resolution 2022-35 20, 
assessing delinquent water bills and property taxes. We'll open the public hearing at uh, 710. If there's anybody that would like to speak to it, please come to the podium, state your name, address, and fill the form out. Second call for public forum or public hearing, I'm sorry. And third and final call for public hearing for resolution assessing charges to property taxes payable in 2023. So then we'll close at 712. So we have two uh, properties that uh, assess us. That, um, charges the property taxes. So I make a motion that we approve resolution 2022 dash 35. I second. Any other comments? Seeing none, by roll call. Here, of course. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Berger. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Councilor Gross. So, Sonny, um, we moved up item J2, which is the public hearing the resolution for rezoning from R1 to B2 for the um, animal boarding house. J3, I'm sorry, J3, we moved it up to um, right now before the department and committee reports. Okay. So we're looking at resolution 2022 20, 40. Just gave you a copy of it a second ago. Correct. Right. This is a resolution approving rezoning from R1 to B2 and conditional use permit for animal boarding at 832nd Avenue Southeast Orinoco. And Mary, if I can, this, um, this resolution contains all the language that, that came directly out of the planning and zoning minutes mm -hmm. uh, with their recommendations. The first five are finding the fact for approving the rezoning. Um, and then the second set of five items are the findings of fact for uh, approving the conditional use permit subject to commission conditions which are then at beginning at the bottom of that resolution. Um, the first one being that the conditional use permit only be a, approved if the rezoning was approved. Mm -hmm. um, so there are eight conditions to the batch. And then a sub note after eight that, um, that a kennel license, which is allowable in your uh, city code, but not on your fee schedule yet <laughs> um, is is also of note there. So there's one comment that I want to make on on that for um, the approval for conditional use permit on that one. Okay, if you look at number three, okay, where it says 15 dogs, okay, that was overnight on what there was. And there's additional ones, right? It's on here. I was I had the same note. Yeah, so but, it's like I just um, wanted to make sure that we us. had that one. So it's on what she just handed us on the back 15. Well, but I didn't want to okay. No, I stuff. it's the same. I had the same question. But I did want to ask the owners, is 15 overnight? Is that a, a large enough maximum? 35. 35 during the day total with 15 overnight. Yes. That is, that's the correct numbers. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, okay. We went after what it was in the past. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I just wanted to double check with that. Perfect. Yeah. 
We would actually like to have three students for the overnight watch. From 35? No, not oh, from 35. 15. We'll have to go back through planning and zoning on that one to have them reapprove that one to go through that. We would. Yeah, because we had quite a few discussions that there were off of that. And and that was agreed upon by them at that time. So that's what we can handle right now. Oh, so right now that's what you can handle. You're saying for future. So then they'd probably have to apply for another cup. I don't know why the council couldn't make that decision. That's what I'm wondering. Well, again, if you take a look at what their facilities are available right now and what I saw, 15 is the right number now. If they change and have something that's done differently to the facility, then it can go with that. But right now with what the facility has got, that's the right number. But you're right, council. The planning commission makes their recommendation. And council does have the authority to adjust for a minute. But, but I know there was significant conversation significant about discussion. working through this through the process. And I was I listened in or I was or I listened after all of those. So I'm aware of that discussion. I just wanted to ask the home or the business owners if that was truly the number that they thought. So the, the I lady, don't think I could handle fifteen. I I they've watched my dogs and the, they've it's always been fine. And two dogs stay in one kennel a lot, so that's why I want to. Or not even a kennel; they're like big giant. They're and, wonderful. And, I mean, and two so two family dogs stay together, and so I want to make sure that that's still going. You're still going to be able to accommodate that for families that have more than one dog. Perfect. Okay. okay. So I make a recommendation. Or is any other? I was going to make a recommendation that we adopt uh, resolution 2022-40. I second. For discussion, I'd like to have a little bit of discussion about the the landscaping. Um. I felt like there was a little bit of confusion in the discussion, whether they had to be installed at six feet or grow to six feet. Well, it's to grow to six feet, but it's also what we have in code on what's required. It's, it's five feet. It's six foot, six foot high, high, right? Five foot high. But it was six foot high. I don't, I don't have a code here. Santex says in here it says that we'll grow at least six feet tall and spread so that they spread. Okay, yeah. and spread. But I know that there was a lot of discussion back and forth that P and Z was recommending that they needed to be that tall when they were put in. Yeah. And then there was the well, Yeah, you did. You did because of the um not the architectural. Uh, the green guidelines. The OACC, the guidelines. Yeah, there you yeah. go. When they talk about the green, green, the green, green field. Green belt. Green, green, green belt. That's right. Thank you. It says the trees or shrubs have to be five feet tall. Yeah. To start. To start. Yeah. But at planting, yes. Now the six feet intervals or whatever they. They must say. grow to at least six feet. Is what it says here. That's in Stantex. I don't know if that's the code. Um, it's really cool. so I just have concern. I just have concerns with a business that's been here for so long and done so well and had no there's been no reports of anybody's knowledge of putting that strict timeline on them. You know, I'd just like to see them given a little bit more. We're given more time. Right, <laughs> just until September, but I, I mean, it's still within the year. So I was, I would just like to see maybe a till twenty twenty four, summer of twenty twenty four. That was my only thought, and that's just because of the good standing they have in the community, and the fact that there's never been complaints. There is nobody on that side, as far you know, it's an empty field. There won't be anything between now and twenty twenty four. 
Um, so that's well, just that. Those are my thoughts. I just would like to see them given a little bit of um, a little longer grace. I know you gave them a longer grace period. I would like to see even a longer grace period. I think the other thing to consider, though, too, it's not them. They are actually selling it. So it would be the new owners that, that would bring it up to code. And, and I think, I mean, we've already we've already given given them a little leeway on it. Um, because if we do it, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to look at doing this for, for others if they want. Um yeah, we're we're trying to keep everything uniform on where we're doing where we're moving ahead. And the green belt issue is gonna come up more and more on other facilities that there are around town that um are kind of lacking in some of those things that are going right. on. Yeah. And so um we don't want to set the precedence. We did it by allowing them to have that extra time to be able to do that. And that's why we agreed in that extra time that was there. I think too that we could, and this is, this is kind of the situation of um, paving the parking lot. Uh, we have, it's required um, for M1 properties. Um, and we still have, businesses that haven't paid, but I mean, it's, a, it's an open-ended, it's an expense, but at the same time, um, the September date is, I think it's a it's, it's a, good, a good date, but at the same time, I know that the property around it, we don't know, it, it could be developed by September or starting to develop it by sure by 2024. I think just because the sewer project interest is gonna be there, that land is gonna be developed. So mm -hmm. I'd prefer to keep the September 30, 2023 day, um, and with the understanding that the, the new owners may come back and and ask for an extension, and that's, I think that's a very legit request to do okay. that too. Is is that what the all the people who haven't paved have done? Have they asked for an extension, or have they just not complied? They get the letter every year okay. from city staff that it was required to be done, and. Some have done it and one, and some have not yet done it, but they're still being brought to their attention that they need to do that. But did they formally and, ask for an extension? I'm just wondering, it's no, because never, I do think that's nice never, for people to know that that is an option yeah. if if things are, if they're strapped or, you know, and that we may. It's you know, we're, we're not really called an extension. I maybe used the wrong word there. We didn't really ask we're, we're, a letter being we're, sent we're, to them, but no response. We sent them another letter. We're trying to be um, a little bit more formal on how we're doing these things and a more proactive on enforcement. And, and so there has been one of them that, that's been paved, which was an issue that was coming up that, that got done. You know, and so uh, especially if we're moving forward with CETA and what we're trying to do in the community. That, that we need to adhere to some of those things because other businesses that come in, if they don't or see that we're to. adhering to the, the people that are here, then we're going to have an issue with that. So, Is that okay? No, Acceptable. You know, it's, a good, it's a good point. And I think that if you like to plant trees in either in the fall or spring too, for that matter. Any other discussion or comments? I, um, if not, let's uh, proceed with the roll call. Mayor Eichhorn. Aye. Vice Mayor Fultz. Aye. Councilor Berkner. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Councilor Gross. Very good. I gotta take this call. Thank you. I'll be right back, you guys. Bye. Thank you. We'll go back to our agenda here. And uh, water and sewer, Sergeant Chambers is not here unless he sent you something. Funny. Sergeant Chambers? No, he didn't. Okay. But we'll start that in 2023. I've asked him for activity yes. for the city so that. We're kind of tracking some of that. And he gets released more. Thank you. Okay, so we have some FYIs. 
And um, Joe, you want to share an update on the yeah. sewer yeah. plant, contract one? Yeah, absolutely. There is a memo in the packet that does a nice job summarizing um, where the contractor is at uh, through December 6th. Um, and then beyond that, um, the contractor has continued to work. Uh, they're uh, assembling the domes that go on top of the sludge storage tanks. Uh, they've started to in, they've installed the remaining doors and, and garage doors. Um, the admin build, the admin building uh, brick facade is essentially largely constructed. Uh, and then they continue with um, miscellaneous piping work and and uh, electrical mechanical work throughout the facility. So things kind of continue to uh, progress. Um, contractor is working this week. Um, things are slowing down with the weather. Obviously, I sus suspect uh, they might not be working tomorrow or the next day. What? Why? <laughs> and they are taking the week between uh, um, Christmas and New Year's off. Uh, so, and that's pretty common, especially with the weather. So. Um, things are progressing from that standpoint. Um, one update, um, we've got a bit of a challenge that we're working through with the gas company. Um, we have a um, allowance within the contract, a $55,000 allowance to bring electric and gas and communications to the wastewater treatment facility. And uh, the estimate from the gas company to extend gas to the treatment facility is about 100 grand at this point, uh, which needless to say is far in excess of what was estimated. Um, their stance kind of is, is that um, the gas main needs to be brought from Hunter Street, which we knew. Um, we just didn't expect in their initial estimate that they gave us didn't assume that the city would be paying 100% of that cost. Um, so because you're the first user, you apparently have to pay for the gas main, which in a meeting last week, I told them I didn't think was fair or equitable. <laughs> so we're gonna kind of continue to have some conversations, uh, looking at some different alternatives, potentially um, extending gas uh, from the South rather than the North through Orinoco Estates. And then also I think you know, if the costs continue to look to, to, to be that high or unreasonable, I think we should look at uh, propane. So um, I'm sending some information to the gas company. Uh, we'll have some additional uh, correspondence and then they're gonna put together an estimate after the first of the year. Apparently they're pricing updates and they don't wanna do it until then. So I'll bring that back to the council when I know more. Um, hopefully we can come to a reasonable resolution, but that's one item that uh, surprised me. Uh, and uh, hopefully we can work out something more equitable than what's being proposed at this point. Quick question. If we go to propane that there is behind it, are we still in the right time to be able to change the burners on everything? Um, I don't know that it's burners on everything. I think there's fittings or... I, I've got to ask, but I understood that there are orifices that need to be changed or small components within the um, equipment that would need to be changed, but it's not it's catastrophic in, in any stretch of the imagination from what I'm understanding. So we'll kind of dig into that farther and see how much gas we really are using. I don't think we're a real big user out there. We're a much bigger electric user than we are gas users. So we'll see, see what our options are. I'll kind of assemble that information, we'll bring it back and talk about it when I can talk a little bit more intelligently about it. It's just an item that came up last week. It's on my mind. Um, and like I say, I don't. So the long-term so, propane might be a good option just because as that area potentially develops, well, the Orinoco Estate side or our side, you know, in my mind, it's probably a short-term solution because let somebody else pay to extend the main out there. Then they can be the first one to do it. Somebody's going to do it. I don't. It just doesn't seem to be fair, in my opinion, that the city should bear all that cost when Orinoco States, for example, immediately south the treatment plant is planning to expand. Matthew is talking about uh, a, a bituminous plant and other 
other people are talking about potential improvements and they would all use gas. So why should we fund the bill? So did the city, but so did they, did the gas company give us that number? Or was that just an estimate? They gave us an estimate a year and a probably two years ago now. And they failed to mention that we would have to do, have to pay all of it. Well, they yes. Yeah. You only came party in town, so yeah. yeah. Isn't so, there something that we can do to hold them to it? You know, it, it's an estimate. Though, that's well, it, it was a, we didn't get a written estimate because they wouldn't give us one. Um, um, so it was uh, good as the paper it's written on. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, the L LP might, might be a, a good way to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. And then and throw that at them. You say we're say okay, you don't want my business. I did throw that out. So we'll see. They don't care. <laughs> they might not. They want to explain the feasibility report too. Yeah, they'll they'll assemble their their feasibility report after the new year changes and their pricing's updated for the new year, and then we'll have a more accurate look at it. And, uh, I'm gonna get them some information about potential routes to the south, and um, we'll start to pull some of the other together too. I just wanted to let you know that okay. that hundred thousand will now go to 120 next year. Yeah. Well yeah. we'll see. Or or can we push it? Is it is it uh one person or is it the person from above that makes those decisions that are saying hey this is the way it is. Yeah oh, that is hurt too yeah so maybe 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 um I guess I'm open to any avenues that we have. I just I think coming south is a good early. idea. Yeah. Or, mm -hmm. You know, working that from more north coast states, going north, going that direction. I agree. So we'll we'll look at a few options and see what we can do. Work out something more effectively. Um, anything in the update, uh, in the memo, or what we're Seeing out there that folks have questions about, I'd invite you out, but anytime soon would probably be not so fun. So maybe maybe the, in the new year. I had, Last a, we did with <laughs> I had a question from a neighbor. So the River Park find Ryland House, the the um the um lift station. Is the infrastructure is is the are we still needing to dig in place, place the piping, or is that using the current? So we use a, um, I'm just looking to see if there's a, where the maps are for that area. Uh, we use a combination of existing force main. Here's the lift station. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So here is the lift station. Uh, we put in a new structure there. There's an existing lift station that that will replace. There's existing force main that you can see on this map in, in gray that gets us to here. Okay. That's an existing four inch force main. So we use this section of existing force main and then this new force main was installed this last summer. Okay. So, so, that, so that gets us to the big lift station. Perfect. So that, so everything, like the road. Um, Still have to hook in. Well, you're right, but the road, they have to hook in. There's a little bit of piping work that'll have to oh, happen. Oh, from that here. front to, yeah. yes. Okay. I'm just thinking. right out in front. And, and then, of course, yep. there's driveway construction and those okay. types of things. But that's all existed already. Okay. Yeah. That's basically, that's yeah. what I understood. So I just wanted to make sure I was yeah. relaying yeah. the correct information. <laughs> Along those same lines, there's, there's, and we'll do this with Cedar Woodlands and Riverwood Hills and River Park, is that all those lines and the streets will be televised. To make sure mm -hmm. because we're taking over the maintenance of them, so they'll be mm -hmm. held and mapped, mapped. Mm -hmm. <laughs> which will be nice. I know where they really do go. Yeah. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Right. Anything else in the treatment facility update? So the next item we do have is a change order uh, that is also in the packet. Now the change order contains well. The net result of the change order is a $36,000 ad. And so to get the $36,000, we've got essentially six ads to the contract and two deducts to the contract. Um, the net result 
of the change order is yeah. that we're still about $13,000 underneath the original bid amount for the treatment facility. And within the change order, we do kind of talk about the eight items. They're kind of a hodgepodge of uh, different things that have required adjustment or modification or additional costs for the treatment facility itself. Uh, and so they're kind of itemized A through H. Uh, and then the cost for each of those eight individual items are kind of summarized on the second sheet. And then in addition to that, there's uh, a pretty significant packet of information um, that we didn't attach to the, or include in the packet because it's, it's about 60, 65 pages, something like that. Um, but that's essentially the um, information from the con contractor, shop drawings, revised um, sheets that all kind of feed into the change order and support the cost. So we went back and forth with the contractor a few times on a number of these. Uh, the contractors made some concessions in terms of price. I think, you know, overall, it's 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 a reasonable fair reasonable and fair change order. There's a few items I think are a bit high, but uh, there's a few other items that I think the contractor was 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 more than fair with us. So um, that's kind of where we're at in terms of the overall cost. Any mm -hmm. items, and we talked about this at sewer and water a little bit or quite a bit uh, last week, but are there any items that the council specifically wants to touch on or talk about, or I, you know, I can go through them all too if you want, but I know we've already been here since 5.30, so. I think the thing that, that uh, stood out to me in that meeting that there is, is that the original contract amount was $20,667,000. Mm -hmm. um, and right now we're at 20653000 with these changes. So we're right in line with what there is for the original quote of, of what we've been doing. So I think you've done a very good job on, on keeping that at that level, and, you know, so. And, you know, I remind the council, we still do have that contingency. Yeah, but that's without getting into the contingency, right. that's and what that I'm saying. That saying is, is, you know, that's. We're sitting in a good place, right. yeah. yeah. And the contractor continues to, to make good, Good progress. Um, you know, the, the biggest question is how is instrument, instruments, controls, and electrical components? Um, we're still being told that we're looking at delivery this spring, which would put us on target for substantial completion and final completion when we're supposed to. Um, and in this day and age, that's pretty good. I'm impressed. You know, I mean, for us to be with out me. there, everything that's going on, everything yeah. that's done. Absolutely. Um, there is a contractor uh, coordination meeting, I believe, on the 10th with Stab, January 10th. You're all welcome to that. Uh, I'll also mention that there is a scheduled uh, coordination meeting with Fitzgerald on Thursday at 10. I'm not sure if we're going to meet or not. Um, We'll this see. Thursday? Yes. Yeah. And one of the big items at that Thursday meeting is Gold Rush and impacts the downtown contractors looking at some sequencing, uh, some staging plans and scheduling. Uh, we've, been, we've asked them very specifically, what are you going to do? When are you going to do it? And how can we minimize impacts to Gold Rush? Yeah. So we're going to be working through that and we're having that discussion. Hmm? We're going to go to that one. Yeah, I was going to go to it and... Um... Dana, whoever wants to go through it. I mentioned at the November meeting last meeting that we needed to start the discussions. Right. And um, so they multiple times said we'll work with you, but at the same time, uh, we need to have, we'll find out, I don't know if we'll get the final decision this week, but in the January, February timeframe at the latest is what we need to really make sure we're okay for it or not. One or two. But if you, I, I'd like to go to it, but if, if it's going to be done on Thursday, I can. I yeah, can, uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, I, mean, I think that's a day I can't do anything extra this week, so. But I would love to hear, if you have it, I'd love to hear. Yeah, absolutely. The results. Yeah, we'll, just go, we'll see what they say. And, and, uh, would, would you go with a kind of a map of, of the area that we used last year? 
Yes, we circled the area. That, okay. In fact, it's on that okay. the map in the back, you'll see a big green line around okay. the exact same area. Uh, one of the questions we have is uh, the traffic route mm -hmm. on the east side. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk more detail about that. Okay. But it's, we won't finalize anything, but we'll just continue the discussion. And maybe yeah. in January, we'll be able to have something to the February Gold Rush meeting, I should say. Okay, perfect. Yep, just keep me updated. Okay. All right, I'm making a I'll make a motion. We approve the change order number two. Second. Any other comments? There's none. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Two and three contracts. Um, well, we started the discussion on that just a little bit. Um, I will also mentioned that on that map back there, every month we go through that and kind of color code. I think in blue we used last time, but if you're curious as to what has been installed or what's in the ground, uh, the map, everything in blue highlight on that big map back there illustrates what's been uh, placed. So we'll update that tomorrow or Thursday, presuming we have a meeting. Um, contractor continues to make some progress um, with weather conditions. Uh, allow uh, they continue to work on lift stations uh, and some um, piping within Riverwood Hills over by uh, Memorial Pike Park. Uh, and then, of course, at the uh, lift station that we've already kind of talked about. So, oh, and, and the other piece is the, the outfall line coming up out of the river. Um, and so that is just about tied together. Um, so that, that's good. I have seen one erosion roll put down. Oh, by the station one, one A, by the just station behind us, they put one down through the ditch. That continues to be a kind of a source of frustration with our contractor. So we will definitely talk about that but tomorrow. Say say that again. Um, wherever they done excavations, back there. <laughs> wherever they done excavations, a lot of dirt and everything. Typically, you're supposed to put erosion control devices rolls down and. We're struggling because to get it's them the mayor's yard is why they did it. I don't and uh, <laughs> comply with what we expect for road control. So we continue to talk about that and push on that. Um, are they working this week then at all? They really aren't. In fact, they're off through the rest of the year. Uh, they kind of wrapped it up uh, earlier this week. I think they worked a little bit on Monday. Um, they had uh, a drilling crew here, a subcontractor here yesterday, um, but uh, they don't have much going on right now. I think they're pretty much off with the weather through the holiday and maybe even through the new year or through the December to the new year. So. Uh, Minnesota January is not nice anyway, but hopefully. Right. We will put out another um, resident notice here pretty shortly. I think impacts are pretty modest at this point, but I think people still like to know what's going on. I've kind of pulled it back to once every three weeks rather than every other week, just because it's a bit slower, a lot slower. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll we'll continue on that, that path, that's all right. Did they, did they finish up lift station three, Riverwood Hills? Um, not to my knowledge, but I haven't. No, I don't think so. I don't think so. Okay. Any other comments for Joe? Okay. Thank you, Joe. Uh, Public Works. We have three action items. There's a middle in the uh, packet from Kane. First one is a water system upgrade from end controls. And, um, I would make a motion that we approve in controls proposal for $16,735 and that we would use American Rescue Plan funds. Hmm. That was my question on that is where that was going to come from off of that. So that's a great idea, a great use for the funds. Uh, Last year, we used 
uh, those rescue funds for uh, the reservoir mixer and the uh, inspection and cleaning of the reservoir as well. So great use of those funds. Yeah, I think so too. And we have, um, okay, let's just take this one by one here then. So was there a second of my motion? I'll second it. Jim, okay, go. This is, um, we put the system in and Joe, and you can speak to this too, it was a basic system and very basic, but it got, it did what we wanted to do, but now we're just upgrading it, so. So when, uh, during this last construction season with uh, water tie-ins and improvements, there's times when the reservoir isn't available to all of the towel. So you'll have to valve off and uh, isolate parts of town. And so when you when you turn those wells on, they just run at a, a constant speed. So you're wasting the water unless you're using it. So with this new control system, it's kind of like the smart system, you know, uh, like your air conditioner at home. It doesn't need to run at 100% if it only needs to run at 50%, right? It's just on uh, usage. So if you're using a lot of water, it's going to ramp up. It's going to give you more water out of our wells. If the usage is really low, it'll ramp down, slow way down to that minimum speed to maintain a set point. So it's kind of the smart controls versus the old trusted controls, which worked, but very, very simple and, and uh, not really user friendly. And you've got that many more people that are going to be going on to the water too. So I think it becomes more important to be able to control that. I think, I think as the city grows and, and future add-ons and tie-ins to the system are, are going to require more um, flexibility from mm -hmm. us. So um, this, is, this is one component of the water system that I believe will help us out. For everybody's benefit, too, we keep the reservoir about 30 percent. Uh, right now we're keeping it a little bit higher. Uh, uh we are uh, our usage is up a little bit more as well, so that helps. Uh, but having that uh turnover in our reservoir, having that fresh water in there, and then uh, our mixer is, is working well every day, we're checking that, so we know that our, our water quality is up there. We're testing every day, so we know our. Our chemical residuals are there. There's no bacteria. So uh, we're keeping the water a little higher. Uh, there are certain parts of town, higher elevations, where they kind of depend on that, that extra few feet in the tower. So that's what we're trying to accommodate. Any other comments, questions? I have a question, if I may. <clears throat> on this, so this is all analog. Analog system. Me, what what part of the system? I guess. Oh. The in in what regards? I guess. Well, I was I was looking at the you know me. I'm all about the numbers. Um, the proposal summary shows the the total at sixteen thousand, and then there is a deduct for item three. That sure. the. The materials are a four channel analog output module. Right, a, a PLC. Uh, so, what that does is that uh, allows a pressure at each well house. We take a device and measure the pressure of the pipe, pressure of the water system, and that tells our, our pump, our well, to speed up or slow down based on what you want to set that at. So, you could say, All right, I want to set this well at 50 pounds and run. So it's going to ramp up based on usage, slow, speed up, slow down. So I think your question is, you know, electronics wise off of that, which makes sense. But I think with what Kane is saying that you need to have that meter, that's a pressure meter, that's probably analog by what it reads for pressure. 
But I, I see it because I had it marked also too for input and also for output, both of them uh, for that, that analog. So. so right now, all it says is, uh, hey, I'm low, turn on. That's what the well does right now. With this new system, it'll say, hey, I'm two pounds away, I need to speed up a little bit. Or I'm two pounds away, I need to slow down a little bit. And it's that smart uh, control that will maintain that, that desired so, pressure. So I think also what, what, what you're asking on that, Sunny, is too, that we stay, that this is uh, uh, the newest version that there is of, of this particular yeah. type of, okay. Yeah, I'd go with that. So it's setting us up a little more for the future. Yes, and then of course too, you know, when, when that reservoir is offline, for an emergency or a planned outage or whatever, you know, we can hit this pressure mode on both wells and and they can they can adjust and modulate to maintain a pressure without that reservoir, without that as our 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 supply. So it's 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 a needed it's a needed feature, I believe, of the of the water system. So, so you control that in your office then off of that or so I wish. I wish, uh, you know, that's I mean, not that good. We're not that good, you know, and that and that was some discussion that we had is, you know, uh, here's the next feature they can offer us, which we can control from the well houses. The next step from that would be something that would be a web-based program. We could get it on our smartphones, our iPads, and you could be on vacation, sit on the beach and say, turn on the well, turn off the well. So. That, that's the Mercedes. That's the Mercedes. We're, we're the Buick. This but, but, is uh. Right. But will it work that if we go to that next step, you can still use this same stuff or not? Components of it, you will. But at some point, we'll have to go to an actual uh, front end computer driven system. You know, a, a server versus a local SCADA PLC. What's your projection on how soon for that? Are we gonna are we gonna be required based on our water and sewer project to move that way anytime soon? I, I don't think so. I, I'd say 10 years from now. I, I think we can get definitely a good 10 years out of this system. And and who knows, depending on growth and and the water usage, maybe a new well is in the future, a new tower, a new yeah, the sky's the limit. So, so you're checking the wells every day. So you you're in the well house every day anyway to change Correct. those pressures. So yeah, you know, and and we do that not only for the Department of Health standards, but we for our own standards. We want to make sure you come in Monday morning. You're not walking into a a, a jungle. So we're checking seven days a week. All right. Any other comments? Pretty good. Thanks, Kate. All those in favor, signature probably saying aye. Well, aye. one more discussion. It, sure. I'm just wanting to make sure when we approve the amount, it didn't include a sales or taxes. So I just want to make sure we get everything. Excluding that. So how much do you think? The amount. So the price in the recommendation is the same price that's on the proposal, but it says that it excludes sales and taxes, or sales taxes and use taxes. So do we need to consider that? I, I don't think we pay, we don't pay taxes. Um, okay, but what about shipping costs? Other than the primary, I just okay, want to make sure, yeah. Budget side. Okay. yeah, I just want to make sure we propose, it's the correct number, it's amount of money. Taxes. And freight is included. Yeah, freight is that, included. Is, okay. Yeah, it's a primary mm -hmm. project site. So. Okay, perfect. Is there a time frame for when they would do it? You know, this is something that could be done this winter. Uh, you know, it's all indoor work. So, okay. so you don't, you're not anticipating any big lead times. I don't believe so. Okay. My plan is to have it uh, up and running for uh, the construction season, 2023. Sorry. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I made a motion. Silent. 
seconded by yeah. that was a while ago. <laughs> yeah, well, we were talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> questions. Yeah. Well, good. good questions. Actually, I wanted to start with the uh, relief valve because that's only you know fifteen hundred bucks. <laughs> right now. I wanted to work into that. Go. <laughs> But thank you. So the relief valve is um just explain you had your memorandum too. We can I would so, so the relief valve uh, that's kind of uh the last step when your reservoir is offline, when you're isolating different parts of the system and your wells are running, your relief valve is set on a hydrant. If for some reason the pressure gets too much and the PLCs and the controls don't work, you've got this relief valve that just whoop, shoots off water into the ditch. And that's your, I mean, that's your, uh, your final step as, so you won't overpressurize your pipes and burst your pipes. And, you know, you think about sitting at the kitchen faucet with a glass of water and all of a sudden, whew, you know, it shoots out a hundred pounds at you. So that relief valve is used throughout the system Last year, we used uh, a combination of three, two from Pine Island and one from Rochester. And so we don't have any? We don't have any. And so what it, it puts us in a predicament, yeah. we're borrowing them and scheduling and, and then they it, want them back. And then they want it back. And I yeah. feel kind of like, okay, so my plan is I would like to purchase one out of this year's budget, 2022. And then 2023, I would like to purchase another one. That way, with the two wells, if we ever have to isolate uh, River Park and Riverwood Hills, each one would have a relief valve. Where do they go? They go, well, you can put them anywhere, any hydrant. With the fire hydrant. Oh, fire yes, hydrant. Yeah. So we just try to find a, a ditch that they can blow off into and, and not disrupt okay. anyone's property. So this all happened last year. There was three of them going several times throughout the summer and I don't know if anyone noticed them or not so which is good it in in my mind if you guys don't notice anything with the water that means we're doing a good job so is that in the budget then for next year or we can work on worry about that next year let's just uh Get the one this year yeah if we could take that out of the water utility budget uh you know, operating supplies or you could use American Rescue Fund. Sure could. It's an, it's an improvement to your water distribution. So. Sure could do that as well. How much money do we have in there for the American? Uh, 105,000. I mean, should we buy two of them then, if that's the well, case, and, and do it that way and, and have two? No, it doesn't come out next year. Yeah. I was thinking of just taking out of the water utility budget. That's why I proposed the one now, one next year. But. Yeah. If that's what you guys want to use is the rescue funds. Well, if we, all... have, if we have money in our budget, we can buy one with that and then one with the American Rescue. So we can split it. That's fine, too. You can get them both now. Yeah, you you them. Them. If, if, there's, if there's funds left, I agree with you. Uh, there's no reason why we shouldn't use the budget in 2022. And yeah. So each valve is $1,840. That's one that that we've used. We've used several of these uh, from Rochester and Pine Island, but the one that we like most is that uh, 1840 from Superior Sales and Service. Mm -hmm. So we do have we have budget for this year, plus we have the American Rescue, right? That correct? You got budget yeah. this year? Budget. Yeah, I got my budget right here. Well, not the water utility. I don't get the water utility budget. I don't know if you've developed budgets for your enterprise funds. Yeah. This... Well, it's coming. Uh, well, we can still, but you're talking about the, the 2022 budget. Mm -hmm. You use the water utility fund for it because there is a line item for repair equipment. Yep. In the yeah. 600 fund. In the 600 fund, there's operating supplies, there's repair and maintenance. What do we look like there? Like I said, I don't get the All 600 funds. I only get the 100s. But did you do a budget for this water fund? We looked at them, yeah. 
That's how we go. We look at our revenue and our expenditures. It's not a, it's not a tax, but we do review them. Yes, because that's how we we look at how we uh, balance our fees, increases, make sure we cover our, not only our loan but also the expenses too. Right. I haven't seen that part. Okay. So. Yeah. But we can just touch base on that. Yeah, because we need to be doing looking at our fee schedule next year. Mm -hmm. and so that's and the fee schedule tends tends to be the well, we're getting real topic here, PFA loan at three percent, three or three and a half percent. So like the body proposes is, we've done that year after year. Keeps us neutral or a little bit above water. No pun intended. Okay. Um, so, well, if there's a question, I, you know, I have no problem with using American rescue plans for buying two of these. Yeah. And, then, and then we've got them. That's yeah. Fantastic. But do we have a motion? Yeah, yeah because you have those those utility loan payments mm -hmm. that just started as a result of the audit last year. When they came with those figures. Sorry. Okay. Okay. So, so long and short important? of it is we have money in, in that fund. Right, the rescue plan. The rescue plan fund. Right. And, right. and and is it that that carries over, right? Yep. We have to use it by December 2024. Yeah, I was just gonna ask, is there a deadline? Okay. Yeah, well, I just think we ought to get the two. Well, so, yeah, then we can give others back and say thank you. Yeah. <laughs> so we make a motion to buy two then with the American Rescue. I'll make a motion that we buy two, okay, uh, with the American Rescue plan. plan funds that we have. Second. You so, second this? Yeah. I have to speak up. So what we'll do here in the next for the January meeting, we should we'll pass a resolution. We're going to take care of the um because we haven't assigned a resolution to the leveler or the um mixer, the mixer, the controls, and these two relief valves we did all in one as a water infrastructure resolution using the American Rescue Plan funds. Not helping with that resolution so like the other one did, so. Okay, the three things, mixer. Oh, the resolution is a mixer, which is on that spreadsheet already that I have. Oh, okay. Uh, this uh, main controls, 16,000, oh. okay. and this uh, 3680 for these okay. two relief valves. Okay. Yeah, 3680. Any other comments? All those in favor, so you can probably say aye. 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 Thank you. Uh, last item tonight is a purchase of a, a second snowplow for our newest pickup. Uh, right now we've got the one pickup with the plow. A second truck with the plow would, would be very beneficial. Uh, we cover a lot more ground. With the plow versus the bobcat, even versus our ATV. Um, I, I, I called around three different places, the same exact plow that we have. That way, the parts are the same. Uh, everyone's familiarity is the same with the plow and the equipment. So, uh, here you see three bids in front of you uh, Truck in America, uh, they're right down the road. Uh, right off Highway 52, flagship Chevrolet, and then of course, uh, Kurtz Truck and Diesel in Owatonna. I put some notes there by those for those figures, and I like the I like Rochester. My, that'd be my number one pick because they're right down the road. If we needed service, if we needed uh, parts. They're our, they're our closest. Uh, that means a lot to me. But then again, uh, if we're looking at here dollars and cents. 
So it's availability. So they're they're available. These plows are all built in uh, Michigan. So they're yeah, installed. Yep, readily available. Uh, and these are all installed prices. These are on the pickup, uh, ready to work. Shane, can you get service in Zumbrota though? Mm -hmm. So Zumbrota, they're kind of new to the plow game. Uh, and that's what they do. They just do boss plows. They install them. Where that first one, Truck in America, uh, from our last council meeting, we bought a diesel tank there. They have more trucking accessories and things that I, I think we'll use in the future. <clears throat> and, and a shop. And, and a shop. They're local. Uh, you know, the owners, they, they live in town here. Uh, not that that should persuade us, but uh, like I said, my number one pick would be Truck in America just because of the, the distance and availability. And, and you have funds, you say, in 20 in our current budget? So if, if you do look at the current budget, I've got, got two different funds you could, because snow removal is a citywide service. It's parks, it's a little bit of streets and alleys, it's fire hall, city hall, public works, water. It will be sewer someday, right? Uh, uh, parks and trails. So I feel like it could be that that 10,000 and change we're talking about. It can go to one budget, snow removal. I mean, that's what I think of when I think of a snow plow, it should come out of snow removal. And if you look at that fund, we've got 32,000 and change. Then again, I think about a snow plow like uh, street maintenance, another budget item, where it's 26,000 and change. So, I mean, we could go through the whole budget and pick apart parks, a little bit of water, a little bit of uh, streets and roads. Okay. I guess we have to really decide on which which of the bids that we, we want yeah. to take. Yeah. You know, I know it's more. I, I personally, I would. I'm a little concerned with the Zumbrota shop, just being that they're not really established yet. It sounds like right. They are. They are new to this. I think if this was. Uh, and so let me ask, if, if something goes wrong with that plow, can you take it to Trucking America and have them fix it? Correct, yes. You can? Yep. Okay. And so, I mean, you look at the one, two from Oatana, that, that is cheaper, but, you know, two guys driving over there, two pickups driving over there, and then driving back, and then driving over to pick it up again. I mean, it's mm -hmm. the wages and the fuel there, I, I think we could eat up that yeah, $369. We could eat up that pretty easy. Uh, I guess I'd, I'd make a motion that we approve the purchase of the snowplow from flagship Chevrolet and Zumbrota, given the fact that it can be serviced anywhere. I would second that. Dana, okay. All right, any other comments? I just have one question for clarity. <clears throat> Your recommendation, if the quotes are for the exact same plow and equipment plus installation. So, but I thought you said it included installation. So I, I'm just a little confused. So everything is installed. Those numbers you see, that's an installed price. Okay, so it's not plus installation, it's with installation. Including. Right, okay. including. If I misspoke there, sorry. Uh, you were those prices good. are uh, installed yeah. out the door. And how, how long before we buy a new truck? So that's a good question. Uh, my plan would be to purchase one 2023 on uh, use CIP funds. And and with that being said, Dana, I would any new truck that we purchase will include a, a plow. I think we had discussions about this at budget time is you know buy the truck, yeah. but then budget for that plow, the toolboxes, the whatever, 
had that a complete truck done deal that year's budget and you know say we save these trucks for three to five years is what i'm thinking that way we got some good resale value out of them and uh keep keep our inventory within a, a few years of each other so that way we don't have a truck from the 80s and then two trucks from 2020 so and this truck the truck that we're adding the plow to is a newer it's our latest truck it's our latest truck yep. okay perfect and so none of the all the trucks of the two that we have two three we have two uh uh plow trucks uh okay. three quarter ton one ton trucks okay. we do have a smaller half ton truck that will not handle a plow so and that's the one that will be rotating out rotating okay out. that's what i was wondering so these other three will be our main ones and that guy will go with this 2023 purchase <laughs> Correct. Okay. Yeah. Got it. I, I want to purchase a 2023. Yes. And that would be the one that it was replaced or that, that little guy for the. Okay. Yep. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Approved? Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Ken. Thank you. So, fire department. Um, Question in the report uh, that Dan submitted, the bills, there's about $4,000 worth of bills there. Do we approve those bills in motion? Well, I'm still trying to understand what because we do have other bills here, but these, um, my there's, understanding, there's invoices here for them and everything. Yeah. My understanding is that if it's under $500, yeah. nobody needs to approve it. If it's over 500, it needs to come to council. I'm listing them simply as a matter of <laughs> keeping you apprised of costs. Um, there are some. There are three of them. Yeah. Well, the other thing that I'm just going to say this kind of um, just as a numbers person, kind of, <clears throat> you know, you've got five invoices for fire safety. So it's you know, although one is, or two of them are over the five hundred dollars, you got to be careful about when you start splitting up those things, so you don't give that appearance to an auditor that you're you're intentionally trying to circumvent whatever your policy is. So, just throwing that out there. Well. Um... One, um, I don't know if this is fire, but there's also similar. One of the things that we talked about at the first responders meeting in Jim and Ryland, where you might be able to go to the fire department meeting. Oh, were, the relief meeting? Yeah. Yeah, the annual meeting. I, I don't know if they discussed anything, discussed. but I, I just, they were, they discussed some frustration in, in, our, in the processes and, and kind of, and I expressed I mean, I mean to come to ask, right? Yeah, there's that. But then there's also, you know, they express frustrations in having to give receipts. And then I thought, well, that's kind of that's really, really basic. Very, very basic. <laughs> and keeping gas receipts specifically, they were they were really unhappy about that. And I I was just like, oh, you got it. <laughs> that's really basic. Like, so at the annual like, meeting, they did give me gas receipts. So there's just a lot of, I think, I think, and I suggested this to them, that we all, council, OFD, OFR, sit down and have a really, like, kind of discussion about our policies, procedures, and expectations. Because I think all of us are a little confused about everything right now. <laughs> like, I think the, the, the actual first responders and fire department new there's so many new people recently i don't know if they really know the proper procedures because what's happening is a lot of the the first responders are purchasing equipment 
um, shelving jackets, whatever, with their own personal cards, which they shouldn't really be doing. Dan should be buying that with the car card from the city. And that's happening. I mean, that's the stuff we're seeing in these packets. And I, that is like a big red flag to me. I don't like that. Yeah. And I know they're, yes, I agree. Their pain's gone. I know they were reimbursing. Um, there was some organ organizational stuff yeah. that happened. And I know they're in the meeting. Um, I can't remember her name, but anyway, they were reimbursing for that. Correct. But like I said, you know, and it had taken a while to get reimbursed and they were frustrated. And I said, yeah, my first, but I said, my first question is, why are you buying that with your personal card? Mm -hmm. That exactly. should never be the case because you could be earning sky miles, yep. Costco points, thousands of dollars you're putting in. That's not okay. And so my, so I think we all just need to have a conversation. Well, and I think it's not okay for them to do it because then they have to wait to get paid back it's not it's not good for in any you know. for anybody you know but that's where planning comes in they should be planning when they want to make this purchase not be impulse to be reimbursed to get it right away and that's and just, it, we don't expect that from Kane right either. And if there is they a better way if there is a better way as far as do they need a better a bigger limit on their car do there you know is there other things we need to have that discussion but i just think there's real lack of open communication between us and them it seems like right now, and especially with all the newer people. So I suggest having a meeting where we all kind of um, like a workshop where we discuss, like lay out the policies and procedures that and our expectations. And then, then, you know, I don't know. That's what I'm hoping to do in the new year. So at the meeting, um, and this is at the relief meeting and then Sunday night talked and so over, what I asked the treasurer to do for the fire relief is to set a meeting up the Sunday who's done that yet or not. But the plan is to have that discussion at Sunny. But if, if we want the council to be involved, that's fine too. But it's, and who is the treasurer now? Is it Leif? Adam Schaefer, the Relief Association treasurer. I thought Leif got voted in this, or is he? I think Adam's the manager. No, Leif is the new gambling it. manager. Oh, he's the manager. Yeah, right. Okay, and he, okay, and he's the manager and Adam's the Treasurer, treasurer yeah. okay. for the relief association. Yeah. But the gambling and the relief association are tied because the gambling yes. funds yes. the relief association. Our department is separate, but we correct. But we thought yeah. we talk about that treasurer first, then our okay. Department. Yeah, I I think and I but I do really think that the the fire chief and they and first responders president I don't know what they call it and vice chair whatever they yeah, need the training to be, and the training and director and and you know, they all need to be i think personally i think they need to be all on this because i don't i just think it's a communication issue i don't think it's anything other than that i think it's a communication issue i mean you look at the memo here and we're approving 1454 dollars for some piece of equipment but yet there's boots and everything else that's three four thousand dollars and we're just membership dues too. But I do think there is a just we need to have a re discussion with Dan for sure. And maybe he can share with us what the what his understanding is and if he agrees with ours or where we differ, but I think we should have a discussion with Dan. Well Dan is the one that that was that via you or Dan told me that he didn't have, he was told he didn't have to keep receipts. Mm -hmm. And I'm didn't saying, what? keep receipts. For like the gas. That was like the fleet card too, or not. Yeah, I, I think that was and, and when they gone. were going to use the fleet card. And that's gone the, by the wayside. Yeah, that's gone by the wayside. No, this is for when they go up to gas and go. They have, we have charge accounts up there. And they would go up and just put the oh, gas on the charge accounts, but never bring me the receipt for it. So I couldn't like cross-reference anything. So that's when we started asking them for the receipts. And they were we were told that at one some point in time somebody told them, oh, you don't have to keep the receipts, we don't want them. I think that was because of the fleet card. This was before us. I, I really I think that you need to have that receipt, yeah. otherwise you can't yeah, yeah, cross-check anything yeah. and anybody can put yeah. whatever they want on. 
the gas charge card and you have no idea what they're doing. And, but I don't yeah, that, and that's where, so this is where, and this is why I really do think it's important to have not just a meeting with Dan, with everybody, because it otherwise. It's the telephone thing, right? Right. Mm -hmm. It's the telephone gate. I want the first responders themselves to hear it directly from us. The fire to, I, I, the I, I, fight, you know what I mean. I agree with that. Instead I of having, to, because I just, I like I said, I think communication is a little bit of an issue, and I just, I think it's important that we all are in the same room and have have a chance. We're, so we're, we're putting the city in a bad position with our auditors. Yeah, if we don't do that. And mm -hmm. I think that's. I, I know, and I, I do think our, I think it would be. I think people would understand once we could have the conversation, but I think. There's things that have been done. You, know, we all know this. It's certain way for years and years, and um, people got used to it. There's and a new sheriff in town. Well, right. <laughs> and and I think I really do think most of these people are taxpayers of this community. It would probably be appreciative that we're being careful, you know, with I, their I money. Agree. So I think that everybody would understand. It's just uh, a question of why, and um, and I and I I will say though too. Dan, Dan is very good about communicating, uh, you know, during the meetings, but it's, you know, depends on who's there. Right? It's a lot, and it's a lot of new people. Yeah. I, I mean, yes. I don't know about fire department, but first responders, it's yeah. new faces every single month, which is amazing. Yeah. But then it's, again, that telephone game of who's telling who, and is it, is it the, is it the old way of doing it or is it the new way of doing it? And, and you, like you said, not everybody makes it to every meeting. Right. So it's, like I said, communication is really hard and the minutes are very, they're fine. They're not, you know, the meetings are recorded and the minutes are, are, are fine, but they don't capture all of this, you know. I think too, we just, not everybody's doing this purchasing. It's maybe just one or two or three people. I don't think carte blanche, everybody's going out and buying stuff. I think they do have some organization. They do. Right. So but at the same time, I think it, it shouldn't, you should really use your company card. I mean, that's best practice. Right. And I'm wondering, you know, do we all have to be there or can Sonny be there and just walk them through it? Because Sonny can talk to, this is, you know, what you said about auditors. Walk them through on what the expectations are, you know, from the audit down, you know, what I'm saying, I think Sonny probably would be the better person to be at the meeting to explain this is what we have to do. Well, I think she should head it. Compliance. I think we, she should definitely head it. But my idea is to also learn from, because not everybody goes to these meetings. Yeah. So I I think it'd be great to learn. To hear from them. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. here's, a, and like we, like I got an update by the way that the iPads are awesome and they're loving them and they're mm -hmm. so happy, you know? And so it'd be good to have, I don't know. I just think once a year, why not? It's, I think we're, we're with Kane and we see all the other employees. I mean, they're basically city staff, you know, if you really think about it. And I think we should have like a collaborative meeting every so often. Mm -hmm. And some of that would have occurred too if, at our annual meeting too, but the weather and everything did allow for some. Right, too, yeah. So, but. That it might be a good starting point here after the first year yeah. to just you know, Sunny and I sit down with them or have them come to have a special meeting or half hour meeting before our January 19th meeting or something like that. I just like to see, yeah, I'd like to see us get together and 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 even make it an annual thing and maybe even an appreciation thing or something, you know, yeah. for our for our fire department and yeah. first responders. Some just just a thought. Anyway, that went way off topic. I, I like apologize. it though. Okay. <laughs> I have it as a pizza night. Yeah. Truly. Really. Do it that way. And, Truly. And get, get them on the positive. So, yeah. They're having our yeah. Christmas party. Yeah. Well, Sonny, would yeah. you mind following up with Dan? Sure. With this conversation? Pick a, of, are we, Pick a date. Pick a date or just explain to him what we'd like to um, have that conversation with council and um, their leadership or the group, whoever wants to attend. Well, and I think from, because Dana and I talk, met and talked about this, and I thought one of the things that you were concerned about too is kind of the old guard and the new people coming in and kind of that dynamic of succession and just, you know. Yeah. Um, so making sure that. Just make Everybody's sure it's all handed down yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. with good communication. Yeah. So with that, 
do we have something to do here? Don't we have to approve these? The or ones is this an FYI. Oh, it's kind of no, you got the uh, I guess there are some and, that are and vinyl labels. Right. Uh, but those are donated, is... being donated. Or just okay. part of them. That's a donation off of that one. Or the number. There's still a number one, fire department one. Oh, the minutes, bills. the minutes were okay. We're on two approving the two new applicants. So we're we're not gonna move make it the bills is we'll pay as such. Because there's no other place in their action items that covers these bills. Right. It's just showing us what they are, yeah. Oh there's invoices here. There's yeah. no action item for them. Right. So three and looking for three and four. Or he's asking for pre approval on the highlighted ones. Yes, those are the quotes. Okay. Yeah. So he wants us to pre approve so they can go by. Yeah. Let's approve. And I think on the bills, those were pre approved. Mm -hmm. So oh, I don't, okay. I don't oh, think yeah. that we need to. Okay. That, that makes sense. Yeah, because I remember we talked about. Well, we don't have to. Yeah, I, I would agree with you. I think those are pre approved. Yeah. We can, let's go with that. That's a 300. Let's go with that. <laughs> so, um, Jim's got to get going. I make I make a motion that we approve a Bueller, no, Christopher Bueller, and who's the other one? Erica Schaefer. Well, I don't uh, have one name like packet. No, Erica Schaefer and Christopher Bueller as new applicants for the uh, fire department. They passed responders. They passed background. I wrote up stuff. Okay, back up. I make a motion we approve Christopher Bueller for firefighter and first responder, and Erica Schaefer as a firefighter. Can we do the same the next one in the same we or which one yeah, we approve? I don't know who resigned either. We're approving his resignation. Yeah. We're just taking the nominations first. Oh. Okay. Yeah. 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 second? A second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Who the resignation is, I don't know if that's um. Pat McGovern. That no, Colby Keatley is moving out of the area soon. I'll make a motion then. I can make, I'll make a motion to approve Colby Keatley's resignation from the fire department. Second. All in favor, say probably saying aye. 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 Those through. Yeah. Make a motion. We approve the uh, request for E1 intake repair of fourteen hundred and fifty-four dollars eighty cents. Second. Any comments? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Next one is uh, request gambling funds for jackets. Thirty-five hundred fifty-three. Yeah, I think this is. I believe this would come out of the uh, investment fund. I think you know that one fund, <laughs> the four twenty-five account, which is the capital investment committee or capital investment for equipment fire. It's the old 4M investment fund. The 4M is a bad description because we dropped out of the 4M. The 4M was a market fund that the city was involved with up until about 2015 or so, market fund. Now it's just strictly a cash investment fund, we call it. It might be a better way of naming that, so. So Ryland, are you saying for the, for the, for the, what are you, for the 1400? No, the oh, so. thirty-five hundred. Oh, because that's pre-approved. Okay. Huh? That's pre-approved. Yeah, pre-approved. No, we are no, pre-approved. It's a pre-approval. Yeah, but he's, he's mentioned here using the gambling equipment. 
Yes, that's it. Which is sitting in an unfenced. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That's a 4M. Is that why Sonny was left? Yeah. History. Yeah. Is there a second there? I'll second. Get a motion to second. All in favor, saying by saying aye. 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 It's approved. Resolution 2022-37. Say um furnish nameplates and the vinyl for reflecting for the um I think it's for their trucks. I think I, don't, I thought it was on their locker. Yeah, There's I would assume a locker. Okay. And also accepting a donation of $150 from Shad Tracy, a reduction of the invoice. I make a motion we adopt resolution. 2020-37. I think it would be good in the resolution. Uh, the resolution, we don't mention the actual $695.40 in the resolution, if that could be updated to reflect that. Oh. With that amendment, I think it would be. And then, can we just, yeah. I just am. And this was a, it's, we're retroactively approving this. Can someone just kind of. Well, because the city, the invoice came to the city and it's like, what is this? And um, hmm. Kate said it was for the fire department and it's over five hundred dollars. It wasn't pre-approved, mm -hmm. and on top of that, now we have the donation that I think we need to account for. Mm -hmm. um, again, audit trail. And then the balance is still over the five hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. So yep. that that's my rationale for mm -hmm. having done it. But I I agree with you. I can spell out that. Um, that the original invoice is instead of at a cost of more than five hundred, I'll put in the cost of the eight forty five forty. Then they applied the donation. All three numbers are whatever. Yeah. 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 Right, and that yeah, this is just another reason that to have the conversation, you know. So I make a motion we approve resolution 2022-37. Second. We already had them. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you offer the friendly amendment. That's right. Yeah. Correct. So as amended. Roll call, please. <laughs> Mayor Eichhorst. Aye. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Berger. Aye. Councilor Richard. Aye. Thank you all. Next item is resolution 2022-38. I sneak out a little early tonight. Oh, you may sneak out. out. Yes, Joe, thank you very thank much. You. Thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Let us know. Um, we're letting you know about Thursday morning. I will. Yeah, and, and let me know too. Stay safe out there. Four to six days of ground. Two on the ground. Have a great Christmas. Take care. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. 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 Okay, this resolution um, 202238 is, you'll remember that this purchase was uh, pre approved. Um, and now the funds have been received. So this is just acknowledging that the funds came to the city. So the I make a motion to approve resolution number 2022-38. Second. So 
you like numbers. Up in the top paragraph is $2,044.99. Yep. So this is just accepting the 2000 We don't really need to right. balance out that difference. Yep. Okay. All right. Call the roll, please. Mayor Eichhorst. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councillor Bergner. Aye. Councillor Richards. Aye. Thank you. Firefighters. November 14th minutes, and we have a resolution 22-39. This was discussed at the Fire Relief Association annual meeting, and they evaluate this every year at the annual review, and a memo from Sunny that explains what they've done over the years is increasing the, um, it's been a while, but now it's in 2020, it's 2,500. So they're asking to increase it to 3,000. And this is also comes, they work with the state fire relief association. I, I don't know if that's the exact correct name, but um, what it is, is they control the, the pension plan and they monitor them who's in the pension plan, how many years they, each of the individuals have, and what the payout would be if they retired after 20 years and whatever goes into that formula. The state's saying they can, if they wanted to, they could go up to $3,600. And currently it's at $2,500 and they voted to increase it to $3,000 to one annual payment. And that's what this resolution is about, is just asking the city to approve their action of this uh, proposed change. Uh, they chose the 3,000. It's much lesser than 3,600. If they were to go to 3,600, maybe not 3,600, but any higher than the 3,600, that would put the Relief Association as well as the city in a bad light if we were to do that. Sure. So it's based off of the recommendation of 36, but they've chosen to set it at 3,000. Because it has been modest increases from 1200 to 1400 to 2500 and now it's 3600 with inflation i can see where anything else we have to mm -hmm. make a motion we approve resolution 2022-39 second any comments Call the roll. Mayor Eichhorst. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Berkner. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Um, FYI, and the copy of the bylaws brought this to Sonny's attention on page 9 of 11. These high this is. Today's date, December 19, 2022. Oh, I don't know, because this is speaking to the. Um, There's missing something here. Approved by the members on December 13th. Is that the date that they approved it? And then. Um, and then we're just above where you'll sign. It's approved by the city council. That's where today's date will go. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Thank you. Okay. Um, first responders. Actually, three new applicants. Well, we. Ruth already. So James Whiting and Tucker Loy as new first responders. And we approve the resignation already.
I make a motion we approve the uh, first responder applicant Jane Whitting and Tucker Lloyd. Second. What about Chris, we already approved Chris. Yes, and that first we did fire and first responders at the same time. Any other comments? All in favor? Aye. 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 On the notes, there was a uh, accepting a donation from Lance Sorensen. Mentions to Sunny that we should. It's in the minutes as well. Received a check in the mail from Lance for donation. No reference to how much it was. I believe it was five hundred dollars. But we should have a resolution. We'll have Confirm the amount next time, right? Yeah, for January. So yes. Okay. Um, next item is uh, emergency operations. Dan Stunt is the new emergency operations center director, replacing Pat McGovern, who retired. FYI. Planning and zoning. Um, we took care of that resolution earlier. Parks and trails. Down to personnel. Sound system quote. I owe you all an apology and then I'll turn this over to Renee, but when I sent this when it was included in the packet in October, I didn't realize that pages one and two were double-sided. So you only got pages one and three in October. Now you have the whole thing, which tells you how much money it is. No wonder you didn't want to make a decision or wanted more information. Huh. Well, we could have proved it for $600. That was the only dollar figure in there. We didn't figure that was going to be very well safe. Um, so I brought the question up to Renee, and I don't know if it's, you know, the amplifier that controls those back speakers, if that was damaged when lightning or if it just quit. Um, I don't know if we even have any type of. They couldn't say for certain, but they thought it was a lightning strike. We probably have a deductible. Possibly. I'm not sure what that is. Is this American rescue money? If well, it's... we use CARES fund to put it in. Mm -hmm. And this is that same type of, I think it could be used. Well, it's the same type of ungrading, communicating to our citizens. and uh, Absolutely, yeah. especially after Joy's comments tonight. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm glad she said so. Because mm -hmm. it is bad, I just... My hearing's bad too, but let alone mine too. <laughs> All right, who else has a problem? He just said what? <laughs> <laughs> um, the one thing we need to do, we, we talked about these early resolutions of using the American Care Plan, and this is well another one too that I think we should definitely run it by Mike. All the other resolutions, we've done that before we got his pre-approval kind of Making sure it's legit. I think it is, of course. But uh, <laughs> of course, <laughs> you're the mayor. It, it can work. Right. So yeah, that did that. I get you a cup of coffee. So yeah. does this mean we get everything back to where it should be? Uh, yeah, we will be. No, yeah. right, once we get this, so I have four mics hanging down here. Uh, yeah. uh, the question came up. And I don't know if we want to do this or not, but we could, you want to ask Eric if we could take those microphones and put those in the back of the room. Because if they're going to take those microphones out, yeah, we paid for it, but I don't know if there's another, what's well, just two microphones, I guess. It's not four, two microphones. But if we put them in the back room, would that help? And what would it take with our equipment to do that if that's possible? I can ask. The only problem is, is we're going to end up with that whole echoing back and forth well, that they pick up on sound so they're going to try to pick up on if they're 
back there. No. It's, you're going to end up with the same thing can, whether they're up here or back there. Or even in the area of the podium because sometimes it's hard to hear people talk. Well, right. I think you'll have two and then they're going to put two a little bit back farther. So that will pick up the podium. I just raised a question, but you know, what he says, I think you, you're probably right, but I do know that the, the drop down mics will help with the reverberation that we hear once in a while. That will, but I'm thinking if you move these back there, you're still going to end up with it. Yeah. You know, because unless they can balance them somehow. Yeah, can they test it? I doubt it because this is what you're going to get. And then it's those are it's picking up a sound from those speakers back there on these mics and that's where you're getting yeah, this whole yeah, so i don't i think you're going to end up with the same situation if can you pull them back there these? can we get a credit for these <laughs> well a question i have is for these drop down ones that they want to do here um it is is the fan noise going to be increased by virtue of them kind of, I mean, how far do you want them dropped down anyway? Well, the fans don't make it. They don't hear them out. No, they're not running now. Even when they're on, you don't hear them. Oh, you don't? Yeah. No, I haven't noticed it. I haven't, I only noticed this situation back here. Yeah. <laughs> In my ear all night, but I, I'm happy for it because otherwise it would be, I can barely feel my fingers as it is. <laughs> but I do agree with you. When somebody's at the podium <clears throat> and they're projecting toward council, it's. We need people. Yeah. Well, I don't can't hear. Yeah. Right. We need to do something there. That almost bring means, I think, closer. a speaker. Yeah. Well, could we, we could or always bring everybody closer? closer. Could, well, that's true. We used to be closer. I, I like that idea, Riley. Bring the podium closer. closer. There's no reason. Well, but if, if it's truly, couldn't we just have a basic microphone again? There used to be one there. When we had the old system. Yeah. Could we still, though? I mean, why would that intervention interfere? It's just no, all it does. Wireless yeah. mic. We could. We got a microphone stand. It's just getting people. To you know, it on. The last time we tried that, it didn't do anything on these speakers. It only helped this. Well, well but it would help. It should help people. Yeah, there was something. Yeah. Whenever you were talking on it, it wasn't coming through these speakers, but the people on the people on line heard it. That, that was all it did. Yeah, it was that during the public hearing? Remember, there was something where we couldn't use those. Well, and wasn't okay. wasn't it also because Joe was using his computer that no it was I don't know. But it's but if they're gonna be here. Well when they install this we should double check that microphone make sure it was working correctly. <laughs> so you want to table this to January? I mean, why? No, <laughs> no, we need to do it. Open the microphone. It's still, this is an October seventh quote, so I'm open the quote still. Good. I did check <clears throat> not too long ago, and I said that if we can get it in in 2021, we'd be fine. After 2022 or 20, sorry, in 2023, he wasn't sure if prices would change. Yeah, and I think if I think definitely using the funds from the American Rescue Plan, I mean, I actually had written that as a no, not knowing if it's available, but. It and that includes installation. Yes. I think everyone would appreciate that. Okay. I'm sorry, who made that motion? I'll make the motion. We'll second it. Motion second. $9,869 in sound and audio. More comments? Using the American Rescue Plan Using funds American if possible.
All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 I think I do roll call. Hmm? No, we have to. Uh, no, that's for the other one. I was yeah, next one. Yeah. Resolution 2022-36. Make a motion to approve resolution 2022-36. <laughs> Second. Uh, this is our annual designating woman. Yeah. All the roll, please. PRA Courts. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Berger. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Thank you. Administration, we have some. Alcohol license, three duels, tobacco, update of the police card, and a prevention. There's not going to be a delay then coming in with um, with Tilly's as long as he's keeping the liquor license. Is what there going to be a delay? No, he's had the liquor license the whole time. Oh, he's okay. So they just right. continue on. Okay. Make a motion we approve the liquor license renewals for both gas and go and Tilly's for 2023. A second. Comments? All those in favor? We have everybody saying aye. 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 Next is the tobacco license for gas and go and cases for 2023 tobacco license. Make a motion to approve the tobacco licenses for Casey's and Gas and Go for 2023. Second. Any comments? Favor? Signify by saying aye. 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 Approved. Update fleet cards have been canceled. And that has been conveyed to Dan? Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. He never picked these cards up. Yeah, right, but at the meeting, he it was good. He said that he didn't know why they hadn't been used. So I, or he didn't know why we couldn't. So I just wanted to make sure that all the communication. He came in on right time though. Her yeah, bunch of receipts are back from the meeting. So. Uh, resolution twenty twenty two dash forty one. This is a. Uh, Capital credit refund that people's cooperate sends out to their members at certain levels for the city because of our usage is $1,299.49. Make a motion to approve resolution number 2022-41. Take that money. Okay, Paul Roll, please. Aye. Aye. Thanks, Mayor Phillips. Aye. Councilor Berkner. Aye. Councilor Richards. Aye. Uh, can we move and, into new and, business? I'm sorry if I could, um, before we move on from kind of the personnel and administration, I'm a little concerned with this storm coming up. Um, I'm thinking I'm leaving town. Please do. I had a um, tomorrow, tomorrow. Um, but I'm thinking about Renee coming in on Thursday. That may be um, impassable. Right. And Friday and Monday are closed. We're closed. Oh, anyway. so, so you work from home then on Thursday or phone, whatever. <laughs> what I can do, yeah. And can we put a message on the answering? System two. I don't know if I can home, but I can answer phones. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. But I think we should know by tomorrow if it's we going. Should. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think honestly, I think we should just if they're saying that travel, like they're saying, is going to be impossible. Um, it just keeps getting worse every time. Don't stop it. Too, just so. stop looking. Um, <laughs> I know. <laughs> denial. I would say we could make that call tomorrow, and then she could leave it. You know. The only thing I, I would question is. The whole plowing thing so and not not saying because of jan but let, let's let say there's somebody else or something comes up what do they do now so, so when do they I call city hall 
the I same as the weekend or a night though. Yeah. You know, base here. I can have my phone on Thursday because I can get the phones routed to my phone mm -hmm. that I can at least answer phones and people call in if there's problems. And I but I know the guides are, are pretty much know they have to come in and do some sort of plumbing. And I think people know that, you know, the 26th is a day off and Christmas Eve day. Oh, yeah, that's all Christmas posted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And you've all got my phone number. Mm -hmm. If you, so if, you know, if you get a call from a resident or something, Okay. So we're just going to see how it plays out here. Tomorrow, yeah. Leave regarding Thursday. Leave early tomorrow, Sunny. Mm -hmm. And is is that a, my discussion then for calling it on? Yeah, I don't. Yeah. Thank you. If you want to send something out to us, that's fine. Just, FYI. just make sure there's a note on the door. I mean, even preemptively tomorrow. You know what I mean? When you leave. Yeah. I don't think, I, I mean, sounds like nobody will be traveling to come to City Hall anyway. <laughs> but just in case. They're so eager to come see you. <laughs> they want to get a book to cozy up in the book form with. It takes care of the Thursday meeting then here, right? Because somebody's got to open the door. Yeah, we all have no keys. Are you here for Thursday? Yeah. You all have keys. You can get in. Right, right. No, I was talking about the other people for the meeting that was going to be going. Oh well, we'll, let, we'll follow Joe's lead. Okay, and see what goes on. Let you know if I hear Yeah, you get it. Yeah, I get it. So yeah, you open it. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, ordinance. Oh, and this resolution, resolution adopting ordinance twenty twenty three dash forty two ordinance number two B. Determined later, and that is this is the payment 22 02. Apparently, you've had one oh, order. Order. Yes, wait, what the ordinance number is 2022 02. I don't have that. Oh, that is that blank. Oh, who's that new one? It's yeah. 2022 02. It's so the one behind a, it. Yeah. yeah, there's a resolution that's adopting the ordinance that's that is, behind it. God, how do you even keep track? Okay. I got it. Thanks, God, someone's doing it. Uh, but it's already yeah. one. But, um, yeah. But it's, it's, it's two different things. One's a resolution and one's an ordinance. Make a motion to adopt resolution 2022-41. Okay. I really like the idea of this commission and compensating both. Thank you. And it was the budget sorry, number. Mm -hmm. And I didn't see, we put in a maximum of 18 paid meetings. So mm -hmm. That's extra one. So I think in 2023, we, or 2022, we had six meetings, seven meetings. Because they couldn't get a quorum. Mm -hmm. We had three but meetings in this There were some canceled, too. There was only one that wasn't because of a quorum. But... Since I've been coming to your meetings, and not this is a reflection on me, but <laughs> you have you've had consistent meetings right, yeah. with consistent quorums. Yeah, right. Exactly. Except for one mm -hmm. that was in well, I think that was just when you first started, because that was in the summer, I think. That right. Was when there was, there's three yeah. meetings up till like January, March, oh. May or something. But there were a couple that were canceled just because there was nothing on nothing the agenda. agenda right. So that was like it's the first part of the year. Yeah. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, like, that's yeah. just not going to happen anymore. Our town is going to be busy. I mean, you could have had stuff yeah, cleaned up one. before <laughs> I came. Uh, yeah. well, no, I'm not saying that for you, but just, you know, we were at a well, stand. We knew they needed it. The town was at a stand still because of, you know, they waiting, waiting on the sewer. Now it's going to be. There's going to be a lot of stuff going on. Okay, the door. Okay. So, um, you have a motion. Yep. Any other comments? 
I think it's a good idea. I think hope it uh, keeps the commission filled with the volunteers. Amended. You want? Go ahead. Mayor Eichhorst. Aye. Vice Mayor Phillips. Aye. Uh, Councillor Bergner. Aye. Councillor Richard. Aye. And probably you notice there's no double dipping. No, that's okay. We're, we're no double dipping. Yeah. Smart too. No, trying to double dip. I make All a motion right. we approve the uh, consent agenda. Second. That was easy. And we're still just missing the uh, November 22nd minutes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. FYI. Any other comments? Oh. Motion to adjourn. Oh. <laughs> Second. <laughs> Can we vote first? All of the favor say aye. Oh, yeah. Aye. Aye. <laughs> now, Ms. Berger, go ahead and make your vote. I'll second it. Oh, no. Meeting adjourned at 9.02. Okay, I so I just wanted to uh, just bring this quickly to your attention. This little bit I wrote, because this was a question. But, okay. Does that mean we're going to take care of the start? Good meetings. Yeah.